Within the great star system to which our Earth belongs, the Milky Way, many millions of gigantic but short-lived stars have shone and died. They disappeared in huge explosions which filled the galaxy with clouds of gas and dust. Perhaps it was such an explosion that triggered the slow condensation which formed our solar system, the Sun and its nine planets. A swirling cloud of hydrogen and the debris of our galaxy's explosive past. As the cloud collapsed and heated, the central region became so hot and dense that nuclear fusion began. Thus, five billion years ago, the sun began to shine. But how the planets formed isn't yet clear. It's thought that particles of rock collided and stuck together, forming a hot, solidifying core with increasing gravitational pull. What is certain is that the inner planets were the first to condense from their dance around the sun. It was they that drew in the heavier elements of the developing solar system. As the sun grew stronger and hotter, it drove lighter gases out towards the remote planets. Meanwhile, the inner planets had formed crusts, baked by the immense heat released from their radioactive cores. The surfaces of Venus and Mercury, closest of all to the Sun, were pocked and cratered as they attracted the remaining debris of the solar system. London at twilight. And despite a fuzzy sky caused by street lighting and traffic pollution, Venus is plainly visible to the naked eye. Atop the city's tallest building, astronomer Heather Cooper has the planet firmly in her sights. Venus, first stop in our journey to the heavens. It's from here that Space Watch begins its exploration of the universe. Like bats and vampires, astronomers like me only really get busy after the hours of darkness. Ten minutes ago, the sun set, and Venus is just visible behind me, behind St Paul's, at a distance of 70 million kilometres. Halfway round the world in Sydney, Australia, Venus could be mistaken for a city light, the brightest object in the night sky after the moon. Venus lies between us and the sun. Earth is the big planet, bottom foreground. Then comes Venus in a solar orbit of 225 days. Then Mercury, orbiting closest of all to the sun, once in 88 days. Now, because Venus and Mercury have orbits nearer to the sun than ours, they are best seen from Earth just before sunrise and just after sunset. This is the path of Mercury as she skips across the sky. But because she's small and fast and so near the sun, spotting her is no easy task. Venus, on the other hand, is easy. It's even possible to see her change and go through phases like the moon during the course of a few weeks. Even with the most powerful telescope on Earth, this was the best image we had of Venus, a cloudy, fuzzy globe. Possibly, when viewed through an ultraviolet filter like this, those clouds had a structure. But to all intents and purposes, Venus had a featureless face when, in 1974, the Americans launched Mariner 10. Its mission, to photograph section by section the entire Venusian atmosphere. The results were spectacular, especially when run like this in time-lapse. Venus was completely shrouded in dense clouds. 
Hurricane force winds whip them round the globe once every four days and suck them from the equator to the poles. But try as she might, Mariner couldn't glimpse the surface through all that dreadful weather. So, enter four years later, two pioneer spacecraft. Their mission, to finally unveil the mystery planet. The pioneer on the right was to remain in orbit, while the other, a sort of space bus, was to fire its robot passengers right through the Venusian clouds. First, a lander, which would part parachute through the atmosphere. Then, three probes to free four. This was to be a journey into the unknown, what was rapidly to become a descent into hell. So thick were the clouds that the sun vanished altogether. Then, suddenly, things cleared, and there was the surface, cratered and rugged. The final descent was slowed by an atmosphere 90 times heavier than Earth's. Temperature, 380 degrees centigrade. Visibility, less than three kilometers. Everything, including the sun, was distorted. The carbon dioxide atmosphere so bent the light that the horizon seemed to curve up and meet the sky. And just to complete the horror, when it rained, it rained sulfuric acid. These pictures are real beamed from the surface of Venus by two Russian probes before they were frazzled in temperatures that would melt lead. This is a radar scan of part of the planet from Earth. And here's another of the whole globe. Meanwhile, from several million kilometers closer to, the pioneer left in orbit round Venus was busy with a form of radar of its own, electronically stripping away the clouds. And this is what she saw, a planet about the same size as Earth, but much smoother. The blue areas are lowland plains, the highlands are green and yellow. Curiously, Venus rotates in the opposite direction to all the other planets. Nineteen seventy-four, and Mariner 10 blasts away from Venus for Mercury. Closest of all to the sun, Mercury had been impossible to observe. Many astronomers died without once seeing her. Now, through Mariner's eyes, man was to see this hot little world revealed. The spacecraft made a series of passes and zipped this eerie evidence back to Earth a surface of craters and wrinkles. A gravity one third of our own. Temperature by day, 430 degrees centigrade. By night, minus 160. And these circular scars of an asteroid impact. A truly chaotic terrain. Like dried fruit, the skin of Mercury cracked and split over millions of years. Barren and lifeless, this tiny planet is caught in the perpetual grip and intense radiation of its parent, the Sun. Spacecraft have not only provided us with exciting views of Mercury and Venus, but they also continuously survey our own planet, the Earth. Here in Armagh, we have our own weather satellite receiving station, and so we can see wonderful pictures like this showing, for example, North Africa, or Spain, the Bay of Biscay, and the British Isles to the north, surrounded in cloud. Next week, using these pictures, we'll be taking a look at our Earth as a member of the solar system.